this is Tyler Boroff and welcome back to Bug of the Month. We're going to run a jig fly and kind of a counterbalanced jig. I could sit here and pick off a pot of those little guys all day long and be so stoked about it. Well, if the sun comes out, we have the other rod rigged with a couple of mid cool body flies. And then for this one, I like to run a cool body fly off the tag. And usually here, a whole page of kind of cool body stuff. On the tag fly, especially in this water, I want to go lighter. So I'll probably go something on this stage here. A little counter sunk bead. A lot of UV, so it takes a beating. So I got an able reel on this. This is going to be my Euro rod. This is a 10 foot four weight. It was a custom built rod. And this is a Douglas six weight. It is a nine foot, also with an April Super 6 black reel that I use for my suspension rig. Uh, mainly six weight here because you do run into some bigger fish and you got to kind of get them away from snags. Uh, the 10 foot four is probably the sh shortest I would go for a Euro rod here, but it does have the backbone once again when you get those bigger fish to kind of keep them away from everything. And then on this is just a floating line. This one I have a Euro line with a very, mi you say is a micro, more of a six pound Euro leader that goes all the way down to a cider for about a foot to a tippet ring and then most of the time I'm keeping that cider out and I want to keep the tippet below it just a little longer so I can just kind of hover that cider. And that way if I get to deeper water too, I don't have a problem dunking the cider if needed. That's about what we're running here. It's a good thing you made me do that because I just noticed I have a little loop knot that I might be able to save before we walk. Oh, there he is. It's cool when you kind of pinpoint where that strike was and get close to it and immediately kind of recognize that it was probably that one that you just hit. But with the way the flows dropped, you, there's no telling. So you always go back in that same hole. That could have been a different fish. Because it was about two feet above where I did hit that last one. I'm throwing a, what is it, a 2.8 and a 1.5 as the tag fly up here. And they seem to be hitting that bottom one right now. It's more copper tone, bead, nice body. It's a olive brown thread with a yellow tubing over the top and then a Nice Kong de Leon tail there. flash with some uh, Viva's body cool over the top and then UV so it's got flash to it but it's still subtle I think that might be attractive with this Sun coming out like that <laughs> and he ate that fly <laughs> so that just shows you well that fly worked that's always cool when you can make one cast with a new fly and it sticks with Let's try that again. These rivers when they're low, I mean, especially in the winter because you're not worried about temps, but like you get to learn the structure. And so you're seeing stuff that maybe you had no idea was there for years fishing. But then all of a sudden you're like, find this drop off or 
you finally get eyes on this ledge you've been fishing and you understand how you have to get down it when the water's up. If I'm Euro nymphing and I'm carrying a indicator rig with me, obviously I'm not gonna overweight the indicator rig. It's for slower moving water. So if I'm having to put on like a huge weight to get down, I'm better off just Euro nymphing it. You know what I mean? I got tension. I'll have the, the tension in the line I need to Euro it. But with this shelf coming back up here at the end, you don't want it to stay down. Once it hits the shelf, it kind of comes back up with it, like right there. And that indicator moved. Hold hands. Hold hands. Down towards the bottom and get into that feeding zone. That was the bottom mostly. <laughs> Let me get another one before my hand gets cold. Like when I make my leaders, I like to have it come in to where at the longest I'm casting away from me is this where it connects. So that lets me know, hey, maybe you don't have as good a control. You're not presenting it right. You're trying to cast too far. So that lets me kind of mental check myself here. And then a lot of time I'm even a couple reels in with it because you don't need to be too far from me. These fish are sitting right off this ledge. They don't care that I'm standing here. They got too much stuff coming in front of their face. That one I had to let the, the cider dunk a little. They're a little more centered than I thought they'd be. Token, you know? I think I like fighting fish more on this Euro setup because the line's thinner and everything. Like the fly line, so you don't get that sag. So you really feel more of the fight. Let's see if we can go ahead and walk him upstream just by popping that reel downward. 
giving his head a little pressure there. And of course, unwrap. There we go. I've caught this one before. It has that speck on the belly. And you know what? It's always the same color. Oops, sorry. She's always the same color. Can't win them all. My line is all crusty that far back. That's how long I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's just like all wavy back there from being on the rail so long. I never saw it. I think that was the bigger one I saw originally. And he kind of knew something was up to begin with. But you see it's kind of ripply there. That's from that fish that was on it moving this up and down. Once you see that, you should change it. That's very weak right there. If I were just to take it right on that weak spot. That's bad. Bad, bad juju. Yeah, you may have fun and just pounded a couple fish, but you don't know what the next fish you're going to hook into is. It's always important to change it. I think today I'm going 5x, shallow. Usually you go six, five. You see them cruising the top right there munching. There's some kind of betas or a merger coming off. They're just the little guys over towards the end. pickle either. I'm used to pickles. I guess it's got pickles. Dang. And the sky opened up and Jesus said hello. Another one for the cool body.
take a minute to show you some of the varieties of flies I carry. This is one of the boxes I use when I do tight line or Euro style nymphing. And I got them kind of by bead size here. You have a 1.5 millimeter. You have anything from, you know, natural browns and tans to, you know, you got some caddis color bugs here, some red and orange here. And you go in, this side's all two millimeters. Same thing, you got a variety of color beads and then some with flash, some naturals. And then we definitely get some oranges and purples. And then down here you begin to start seeing some of the counter inverting beads, if you will. Which kind of goes into the next page. I primarily carry these in two to three sizes, 2.0 through 3.5. Um, if I go 4.0, I'm usually using a leech of some sort over here. But you can tell there's a lot of cool bodies in this. Uh, one of the staple patterns I found around here. And then a lot of natural colors. You got some browns, some browns with purples, olive. And you got your red midge, your zebra midge. And some flash body stuff down in here. Then to more of a we call the jig sticker if you would it's a inverting annelid and worm pattern which will work good here in the spring that's usually why they have a 3.5 or a 4 mil on them you see these bluers <laughs> of course. So these fish are eating blue wings, which are usually merger style or not. I wish I had a random dry on me. I'm gonna try it this way with the Euro nymph, and then I'll cut it and throw it by itself. That was dirty. <laughs> I feel nasty. <laughs> He's done this before, Jesus. I watched him eat it, but he's on the Euro nymph, but I, I swear I watched him eat the parachute. Maybe not. Maybe he just hit that betas below it. Turn around. Unwrap. Unwrap. I need your head. Thank you. Jeez. That is a rustic looking boy. Damn. Think of a leech. You, know, you think of a brown leech as my bottom fly. I'm gonna try that. A beadless, but it has that veal yarn in it. 
So then once it gets wet, it really soaks that up. It has that leachy goo around the body. Oh, the veal leech. Let's see if that works. That was, that was big. That's the one spot I didn't try too, is down below these. That's a fish. Little guy. Little, I don't know if it's a fluffer. It's basically a zebra midge with a white tail, or the wood duck tail and a CDC puff. Stay out of the... I swear I was the rock, man. Like that, again. <laughs> right on the end there. These all kinds of rap. Just sitting right under the lip of that rock. Or up there. That's a good fish. Pretty one, man. Yeah. I know, I can't give us a break. <laughs> <laughs> 